hi, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, it's nice to see some people's names that I know. Um, so good to see that everyone's everyone's joining us today. And um, today we're going to be talking about Hammer Channel, um, a video platform that the Hammer Museum um, hosts um, their their events program on. Um, it's an open source video platform, and so we're going to give you a rough uh, introduction to who we are. Um, the project itself, you know, how it was conceived, how it was built, um, and sort of where it's going. And then we'll ask you guys to ask us questions. So there'll be a session, uh, probably most of the second half of this session, discussion, um, which will be fueled partly by your questions, hopefully. So please do add questions in the chat, and we'll keep an eye on that um, in response to what we're talking about, or general general things as they come up in the discussion. Um, okay, so I think we'll just introduce ourselves. Phil, do you wanna go first? Yeah, uh, I'm Phil Lears. I'm the project manager for digital initiatives at the Hammer Museum in LA. And I was the project manager for this, uh, for this project for Hammer Channel. Go for it, Neil. All right, uh, hi everyone. I'm Neil, um, senior developer at COGEP down in Brighton on the south coast uh, of the UK. And I was technical lead on uh, this project working with Phil at the Hammer Museum. Cool, um, I'm Andy, Andy Cummins. I'm one of the directors at COGAP. Um, COGAP's a digital agency is in Brighton, as Neil says. Um, we've been working with museums, galleries, libraries, et cetera, for about 30 years, um, quite a long time. And my role on this project was as a kind of uh, directing the project from COGAP side and governance, those kind of things. Um, yeah, so that I can. Uh, how did this project start? Go yeah, I'll give a little bit of context from, from our side. This first quote that you see is our mission statement. The Hammer Museum believes in the promise of art and ideas to illuminate our lives and build a more just world. Um, and we do use that mission statement uh, as much as possible to guide what we're doing. Um, Hammer Channel itself came out of the second phase of what eventually became a six, almost seven year digital initiatives grant from the Mellon Foundation. In phase one, we focused on the Hammer's exhibitions and uh, collections. And when we had the chance to, um, to renew the grant, to add another three years to it, um, we we knew that the public programs were kind of the next um, big column of what the museum does, what we present to our audience and our visitors. Um, so we know we wanted to focus this project on, on our history of public programs, which has gone back um, over, over a decade now. Um, the videos in Hammer Channel go back to 2005, so um, more than 15 years old. Uh, we, um, we saw this opportunity as a as a uh, as a chance to further our mission through the through our digital estate. That's the the COGAP term for it. I love that. Um, but we really see the public public programs as um, as the main uh, the main conduit for that ideas side of art and ideas. Um, and we wanted to create. Well, we proposed creating a tool that could um, basically take all of our uh, history of videos and put them in one place. So I'm gonna talk about the planning and goals from our standpoint. Um, uh, this is a three-year project that we've got 15 minutes or so to talk about. So um, I will, I'm gonna try and give a broad sweep and, and then maybe hopefully get into some of the nitty gritty and the questions, but I, I pulled out some landmarks from the process of the three years. So. Uh, the project goals here are from the actual uh, grant proposal, and it, it's fairly simple. We want to ensure the long, longevity of our video assets, both digital and we had some that were on, uh, on tape. We want to develop internally an infrastructure for dealing with this massive uh, collection of video. We wanted to create a public platform which is obviously what Hammer Channel is, and then lastly to disseminate and, and share uh, the project. So entering the project, it, the issue that we had wasn't that the programs weren't documented, they were very well documented. We had hundreds and hundreds of videos 
on our YouTube page, on our Vimeo page, on our website. The, the issue for us was, or the goal for us was to, um, to, co to, to basically gather all of this together in a way that we can present the full scope of the history of our programs. Um, even though we're a contemporary art museum, uh, our public programs run the gamut from contemporary art to uh, politics and poetry readings and performances, um, talks on the environment, on technology. Uh, and though we were, we, we've had a great, we have a great uh, working system to document everything. We felt that we weren't really taking full advantage of this giant collection that they, we were building of topical, you know, hour to two hour long videos with people who are at the top of their field. Um, and we wanted to present them in a way that we couldn't through, you know, through YouTube or, or Vimeo or on our, uh, to, to have it all together so that people can search within and um, really discover everything that is, that we've been working on for the last um, 15 years or so. So our first, uh, first step really in this process was having a content strategy strategy meeting in August of 2018. The project started in, I think, uh, May 2018, um, where we pulled in the main stakeholders and we talked about, I of course, like all great um, web projects, it starts with a whiteboard and, and a bunch of uh, sticky notes. But we did some, some basically group thinking and uh, some, some exercises to identify what our audience is that we wanna target and what our goals are for the, for the visitors. You can see here, we ask people to answer the three, you know, the three prompts. I want users to feel this, I want users to know this, and I don't want users to feel or know this. Um, it was an interesting process of doing this. The audience we found for, that we kind of could identify for this project is much broader than um, than our projects tend to be. Usually, our audiences are for a kind of I, when I say our, I mean um, on the work on the Mellon project, working for towards a more academic audience. But with this, we saw a much broader interest in from you know people who are not just educators or or scholars or things like that, but people who are just really interested in the news, people who are just generally curious, um, you know, journalists, filmmakers. So we, uh, we kind of took this as our first um, step. We used it to draw together a document of, of goals and um, use that to, to, to power an RFP. Uh, we don't have uh, staff who can, who can handle a, a web development project like this. We don't have developers. Um, and we were looking for a new developer development partner uh, to work not just on this archive, but also a full replatforming of our website onto a new CMS. So um, we wrote a proposed, uh, an RFP in 2019 uh, and went through the process of that. And uh, in May, 2019, finally, we, we, we we came to an agreement with COGAP to begin, and that really um, was a huge moment in, in opening up the possibilities of what Hammer Channel can be. Thanks, Phil. Um, and, and that's where, you know, we, we came in in earnest, but um, we'd known people from the Hammer for years uh, through MCN, uh, you know, all the lovely conversations in the corridors and drinks and karaoke and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what, so we knew about the hammer and we knew the good work that was done there. Um, but even in knowing that um, as a company, we have our own principles that equates to a mission, I suppose. Um, and we're here to build a better online world. You can read this yourself, but roughly speaking, when we get the opportunity to go for a project um, like this project, we, we try and see if we're the right fit and, and if it's something that we are the best place people to, to help with. Um, so we, we hold the various things up, um, the various facets of the project up to our own principles. Um, and on the next slide, 
Um, I've just pulled out briefly where um, we saw the kind of where the overlaps were. Um, so we knew that the hammer wanted um, this robust video storage and management. I've written there, but you know, some way of making sure that the disparate sort of organic growth of the programs and the you know rapid growth of you know, gigabytes and gigabytes of video are rationalized and stored and sort of provide a good platform for keeping it that way in the future. And um, so that's kind of better for the people who use our work. So that's, the, um, or better for our clients, sorry, that's what the hammer are getting out of this in, in the back end. And then for the people who use the work, um, what Phil said, you know, you could see a lot of this content in various places, but it was through the, the YouTube interface or algorithm, you know, you could watch a video and then be sent somewhere else. And um, you couldn't really explore um, the wide uh, range of things that Phil's just described. Um, and it didn't look Hammer, you know, it looked YouTube or it looked Vimeo or, or whatever. Um, and then another facet of our principles is this leading our industry forward. So when we do our work, we hope to not just deliver for our clients, but to kind of come to places like this, talk about our work and hopefully, um, inspire others and make connections where we can learn from other people, that kind of thing. Um, and on this project, one of the key um, uh, things with the Mellon funding is that it has to be open source. So we, we like that idea um, and we like that it has to be accessible. We're both big proponents of that since, um, well, for a long time in particular, um, since 2012 when we did the Olympics website. Um, and then extensible, we always try to make our, our work extensible. So we're trying to lead the industry forward in this open source project. And we're hoping that you guys will tell other people about it today. Um, and then we also, you know, the kind of last um, but not least part of our principles is to try and be a useful part in our community. Um, and it's obvious that that's what the Hammer are doing as well. So we knew that they'd be a good, um, a good fit and we could bounce off each other well. Um, so next, um, we've talked a bit about the context and how we, how we ended up working together, but Phil's just going to talk about the actual work. So we, you know, we now we're engaged and we want another, um, on, you know, quite far apart, different sides of the, um, the Atlantic, but, um, Phil's going to talk about the content and all the work that he and the team did there. Yeah. Again, this is like seeing three uh, years of work in eight bullet points is really um, terrifying for me, but I, I just wanted to kind of make a, a checklist of the various things that we had to do over the course of this time, over the course of the three years. And um, each of them had their own challenges and everything took longer than we thought or shorter than we, you know, like everything ended up being a, a bit of a surprise, but um, first, we created an inventory of all the all the videos we could find at the Hammer across all the platforms, formats, storage locations um, to see what we were working with. And we have you know, uh, uh, almost two thousand, I think, total video assets that we were able to find. Um, that later went through kind of a, a process of of uh, trimming down and prioritizing. Uh, we had about. 700, I think, videos on mini DV, which is, um, if it's not obsolescent, it's, it's obsoleting. If that's a, definitely not a word, obsolescing. Uh, so we had those migrated. Um, ascertaining right status for, for uh, all of these videos was a, a giant challenge. Fortunately, um, you know, we, uh, we have contracts that we sign with the people who, um, who give the talks. So generally we have releases. Uh, but going back as far as we did made it pretty tricky. Um, prep videos for upload, that is like one, four words that took, you know, weeks and weeks. Um, some videos had to be edited. We had to do title cards for some. Um, we had to uh, download them from wherever they were or source them from wherever they were to uh, prepare to automatically upload them into our, into our dams. Um, and eventually we also had to select thumbnails for all of these videos, which is something that I didn't think about that took a lot of my time. Um, and, then in, and then metadata was its own huge, huge, huge project that um, 
that we ended ended up becoming a massive team effort thanks to COVID. Um, when COVID uh, arrived in, in in our lives, when it it, it, it uh, stopped things happening at the museum, um, we were, you know, what 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 we thought we were in the kind of final stages of of trying to finish up Hammer Channel. Um, we had a period right when this happened when we started working from home where there was a sense of oh hammer channel is is perfect for this moment can we make it happen like right now um which we knew was impossible so instead we 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 took advantage i guess of the of the time and uh that we were given by covid we pushed back our our planned release date from the fall to the spring basically so that what we could um, basically take advantage of a lot of people whose jobs were made difficult to do because they couldn't uh, be on site. So people who are working in our visitor experience team, um, people who work in our store, uh, people who do AV for our programs. Um, there are a lot of people under contracts who basically weren't able to, to, they weren't able to do the task they were hired for. And so we were really lucky that we were able to borrow these people to help us with this massive uh, metadata project. We had as many as I think twelve people on the on the team um, working. And I, I put a little screenshot of our Google Doc. This is like one eightieth of the, of the actual document. This was like we we created these core categories. You can see a title, people, topics, which is sort of like general, a list of um, 13, 12 uh, general themes that we've thought um, kind of categorized the, the video as well, tags, descriptions, and playlists. I actually think we have at least one person who was on this part of this effort in the, uh, on our participant list today. Um, so this was a, I mean, I, I don't, I can't get in, into it too much, but it was a, a, just a gigantic, gigantic process. Um, and on top of that, we also, since accessibility was a big focus of this, we wanted transcripts for every single video that we put online. And as we were planning, like our plan was to launch with a thousand videos and it was very quickly became clear that the only way we were gonna be able to transcribe that, uh, that at that scale is by using automated transcription. We uh, did a lot of research on what, what we could use and we ended up with a service called Trint which um, works kind of similar to Otter, which we're, which we're using today here. Um, so yeah, we had to basically run transcriptions of, of a thousand videos. We also had to, um, to develop a, a, a sense of being okay with things not being perfect. The transcripts we knew would not come out 100%, right? We were hoping for 90%. Um, but that's a lot of cleanup. And we knew that we weren't going to be able to, uh, very quickly became clear that we weren't going to be able to edit every single one of these. Um, but I think in the end, we ended up editing almost 300 of them. And uh, they usually, it usually takes about twice the length we found of the program to edit the thing. And so our programs can be two hours plus. Um, so you can imagine these uh, became a huge project. But again, it was a, a really lovely COVID success story of everyone coming together. It was a really wonderful team. And um, it kind of like doubled what we thought we could accomplish with Hammer Channel. There's, I don't know what we would have done had this not happened because it would have been me and a couple other people doing this. Um, but I can tell you it wouldn't have launched with a thousand videos. Cool. Well, thanks, thanks, Phil. Phil. Yeah. That's Sorry, all. I should I should segue. <laughs> Neil's going to talk about the technical development now. <laughs> <laughs> nice, thanks, smooth. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, as you can see, here's an overview, a uh, very simple diagram uh, of the technical architecture. Now, roughly speaking, here, the basic principle behind. I won't go into too much detail here either because I don't want to uh, get uh, sucked into it, which is quite easy to happen. Um, but the basic principle behind the technical architecture follows a pattern, something that we've been doing for uh, many years at COGAP, and that's really to provide a reliable and a secure interface between a private and a public system. 
So sort of ensuring that when an institution wants to put a collection online, they remain in complete control over what data is exposed and becomes public. And we follow that same principle for the system that we built for the Hammer Channel project. We have some private systems on one side, we have a dams which contained all the video content and video uh, metadata about each video. And we have a transcription service which provide transcriptions, uh, Trint, which Phil mentioned. Both of those systems only accessible by authenticated users or from within the museum. And then on the other side of the, uh, you can oh, see yeah, the pink, yeah. we've, got, we've got a pink dotted line on the uh, diagram. And on the other side of that, uh, we've got public facing systems. So we've got a data store API and a search engine. Uh, this is a Laravel and Elasticsearch based system that holds all the publicly available information that we've exposed from the uh, private systems about each video. And then there's a front end application, which is Vue.js. This is a JavaScript based web app, but there's also a, a Laravel part to that, which helps provide statically generated HTML for SEO and accessibility, anyone without uh, JavaScript. Um, and also things like callbacks for social media and uh, Twitter uh, cards and that kind of thing. So those are the two halves of the system. And bridging those two realms, the private and the public, we have a harvester, which is the main sort of metadata processing pipeline. So uh, you, know, you could say this is the magic black box, except it's not really magic. And because it's open source, it's not a black box either. But every time it runs, basically a bunch of raw data about video assets from the Hammer Museum goes in one end. And at the other end, you get a lovely searchable clean index of documents. Each document relates to a single video. And that, that, that index, which is in Elasticsearch, powers the API, and that API powers the website. Just to touch on the harvesting part in a little bit more detail, that's a collection of tools written in Python, which we've developed at COGAP. And it picks up new and updated data automatically about videos from the API of the DAMS. The DAMS, by the way, is Asset Bank. Um, and the transcriptions for the videos, uh, it picks up new and updated data from, from the Trint API. It massages that together, transforms it as needed. So for example, um, Phil might only want certain fields from each video uh, exposed, and we might need to format dates in a certain way, match each asset to its transcription, uh, match each asset from uh, each video from the dams to its transcription from Trint. So that all happens within the harvesting process. Um, and so the end result is a clean single document for each video, which is in Elasticsearch. So you have the title, description, but also the entire text from the transcription. So each video is essentially searchable um, by text. Um, so it's a, it's a decoupled architecture. So the front end and the back end are separate, which gives flexibility uh, for any future expansion. It allowed us to work more easily uh, on separate parts of the system simultaneously while we were developing it. And it also allows us to do things like using, uh, we have the API on a data store, which lets us use the video data on other Hammer applications. So for example, on the website, we pull in the video content and reference it natively within the, uh, the CMS there. And that all happens without having to affect the services that are running the front end of the, of the website of the Hammer channel. So Thanks. I don't think I'll go on anymore because I've gone cool. on enough. <laughs> um, so that, that was, you know, the content and the tech stuff. Um, but then one other, you know, I'm not a designer, nor is Neil. I don't think Phil is, but he's probably better than me and Neil. But there was a whole design process and UX process that was followed as well. Um, this was uh, my colleague Gavin's uh, work here at COGAP. But just to say a quick note on it, you know, it was an iterative process um, pretty low fi We kind of like to prototype things, see how they feel. And we use paper and pen, but we also use things like, you know, Keynote on Apple, you know, slide decks, things like that, just to mock stuff up quickly to see how things feel. Um, and then we tied that in with the work that Phil was doing and that some of us at Cogat were doing on the populating those big spreadsheets 
to see if the interfaces that we were coming up with were actually you know supported by the content that we had and if it wasn't then we would fill in that those gaps so like the um, transcriptions you know that supercharged the search for example um it's accessible all our work's accessible i've already mentioned that we wanted it to be fun to use so there's lots of animation in there and you know it's it's quite slick um and then i just noticed as i was doing this slide and it's the same color as the uh, MCN templates, almost like we planned it. Um, so Phil's going to show you Hammer Channel now. And then after that, um, we're probably going to start talking. Um, uh, well, there's one more slide and then discussion. So please do add any questions because that's what we're going to talk about. So add any questions into the chat, please. Go for it, Phil. Yeah. OK, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to just do a quick kind of run through of, of Hammer Channel. And obviously, this is accessible to all of you, so I won't um, I won't try not to belabor it. Um, but yeah, it, going going off of what uh, what Andy just said, um, we the design we 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 ended up I think going with the simple as as simple as possible because one of our concerns was making such a big and broad collection of videos feel not overwhelming. So this is our homepage, which. Uh, we basically got three types of page. We've got the home page, the search page, and the and the object page, the video page. Um, the home page we wanted to build on a on a kind of a, a reasoning of um, of browsing and discovery. So along the bottom of the screen, you'll see we've got I think we call this the topic trail. These were the 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 twelve uh, the twelve categories, like I said, that we that we drew out of our our collection of videos and we thought it would work well as kind of a, as a signpost, but also as a quick bird's eye view of like, this is the stuff that we talk about. It's not just art. Um, if what you're interested in is social justice, you can jump down to, to, to this area and see what we've got here. Um, we've got these horizontal bands that are very familiar, I think, from using Netflix and, and YouTube and things like that. It allows us again to like, to, to show um, broadly and deeply, so we're able to put a lot of content onto the homepage without it feeling hopefully too overwhelming. We've also got this nice slideshow at the top where we can pull out particularly relevant um, titles. So that's great from a kind of comms uh, communication standpoint. Um, the just a note on the design. So the pink color is it was like we, we wanted these kind of really subtle references to the to the hammer and the the color was meant to match the curtains of the Billy Wilder theater where these most of these programs take place and uh, in our search this overlay with the kind of uh, polka dots actually is echoing a design on our bridge in our courtyard so some cute little um, some cute little nods to the building uh, as Andy mentioned the search we wanted to be really really powerful and using the automated transcripts really allowed us to, to allow for that super deep um, searching for the people who have a better sense or they're not just browsing, they're looking for something specific. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how that works. So, so if you're looking for censorship, actually, you know what, let me take out that search result and just show you, we've got 1100 videos in here. Um, we're able to filter those through a giant list of topics and tags. Uh, through a list of people, which all of these lists can be searched. All the lists are gigantic, so we, we had to make them searchable. We have playlists about that are uh, like certain themed um, series and by date, by year. Uh, but let's say you're interested in censorship specifically, you get 49 results. And as you can see, it's not just searching in the title or description, uh, it's searching through the, uh, through the uh, transcription and it's also displaying that in the results, which we love. It, it, you see um, the italicized uh, text is, means that it's drawing this from the from in, within the talk. So it gives you a sense immediately of kind of what you're getting into. Obviously, if it's not the title of the in the title, it might not be the central thing that they're talking about, but um, maybe you're like, oh, Suzanne, Suzanne Orlean and Roxy and Gay talked about it. Uh, let's see what that's about. You wouldn't maybe suspect that they would be talking about censorship. So this is our video page. 
we wanted to make it as interlinked as possible. So you can find anything that these two have, have appeared in by clicking these. You can find other videos on the same topics by clicking these. Here's the transcript, which works really, really beautifully. It, it will scroll along with the video, um, but you can also search through the transcript, which is really exciting because if you're only interested in censorship and they mention it 40 minutes into an hour and 20 video, we don't, ex we don't expect our viewers to you know, spend that amount of time going through. So we have this beautiful search. It even will uh, suggest your search query. And then you can find uh, the, the section that you want you can play the video. Actually, I'm just going to play a moment. One of the people who works. You can the see we have LA this beautiful right now was telling me beautiful video player um, with the pink accents. Um, so once you find this area that you're interested, we also wanted to make it usable in a different in, in, in certain ways. So we wanted to create one of the big challenges our our content poses is just the length of it. You know, it's like you can't really, sh it, 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 you know, can't really expect people to share a two hour long video or to be watching video after video. So we wanted to create a clipping tool that uh, allows you to take the pertinent clip, set the start time, you can let it play and for, for however long that you want until you get to the end of the, at the end, of, end time. And then you've got a URL that will take you to a clip of that video that you can then use on social media or put in a slideshow if you're teaching or something like that. We, we uh, wanted to make it as open as possible um, without, being a, without having the um, permissions to download the videos. That's not a capacity that we were able to, uh, to provide. So we thought this was a nice, um, a nice option for people to take the bits that they want and, uh, and share it how they want. So, let me just, I just want to, before we open it up to questions, just talk really quickly about sustainability in the future. So from my, from my perspective, like one of the challenges here is getting from project-based thinking into acknowledging that what we have now is a living, breathing website with its own dams and a standard of content that is pretty high. So thinking about how we sustain that, it's something I think that museums generally are not um, always have at the front of their mind, especially when we're getting funding. Um, but what, what's been involved since we launched, which um, I probably should have written down when we launched, I completely forgot, time has, has melted from my brain. Um, but we've had to integrate Hammer Channel as a new, as a completely new um, storage and publication system into our workflow that we already have that goes from planning and recording the program to getting it online onto our website and then into the archive. Uh, the time and labor involved in that is not nothing. It's quite a bit. And we obviously we're not we don't keep a this team of 12 people. It's it's now up to me and one or two other people to keep it moving. So and we do a lot of programs. Um, in usual times, we might record like three or four a week. Uh, the cost of ongoing fees and services, like I said, we have a dams now. We have Trent that we need to keep using because, like I said, we 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 set a we set a bar for the for the content, and the amount that we're doing with it, that we now need to keep up. And then there's like the fact that we just created a thousand new uh, video web pages, um, storage for the video, and everything like that. The the ongoing fees when it actually hits the museum's budget is um, is always a, a, a touchy area. Thinking about how we can improve and update on the system is something that we've like hardly even had time to think about, but we need to. User testing and analytics, we've literally had no time to th think about it. You know, those of you who work also work in museums know it can be tough. We're kind of like sharks always moving forward. So the looking back and iterating, it's just a, it's a tough thing to do in the course of our of our of our daily lives um and then the other kind of challenge opportunity is just disseminating the project which is what we're here to do and we want to continue we this is something we would love to see other museums take on and adapt for themselves and so uh we're here i'm here cog app is here to help you um understand what's involved in that and with that i'm gonna I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to open this up for questions or for the reading of questions.
Cool. So I can see a few questions. Um, we start at the top, I guess. So we've got about like 10 minutes, so we'll go quite quickly. But do, does the content taxonomies on Hammer Channel extend to the collection taxonomies in the museum website? No, it doesn't. It's a completely a completely separate system for the video. Like it's a it's a different dams that we use. It's a different all all the um, the metadata that we're gathering is we we were basically well, not totally starting from scratch, um, but we were developing with this project in mind. So um, the the collection taxonomies were developed separately, and uh, but the. What, what you're suggesting is like, that's what we should be doing, right? Like we, our, our hope is always for these things to encourage a more holistic, like, you know, moving forward of the institution. And that's something we always struggle with. It's just like, we, we build these things as projects and it's not, they're not always speaking the same language or sharing the same technologies and things like that. So um, yeah, no, we, we, <laughs> they don't extend. <laughs> but I think what Neil was saying about the, the technical approach to the APIs means that none of that stuff is cut off. Um, so there isn't, there, there are collection, you know, digital archives and things like that on the main website right now, but there would probably be scope to do things like map. Like it is the balance of, of the mission at, um, at the Hammer is art and ideas and yeah. they're two sides of a coin, but it doesn't mean that they can um, kind yeah. of link to one another, even if it's not directly. Exactly. Um, we could we could blend those together if, if we uh, if we wanted to, I, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so the next ones are around. I think you kind of answered this one a little bit already, Phil. About um, have we found any unexpected audiences? We there is quite extensive analytics on the website, um, but we haven't looked at them yet. I mean, we we're on a bit of a we launched. In the time of either. Um, and we haven't done much, so that's been building up, but it would be something interesting to look at for sure. Um, and it's probably, I would definitely like to look before the end of the year and uh, maybe we could get some time, Phil. It'd be interesting. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, let's just give it a year so that we can really let the analyst, all the data build mm -hmm. up as opposed to like, it's been six months and we have not gotten our, our stuff together to do it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, we don't know. Yeah, we ha we haven't found much. I mean, I think um, there's been a bit more attention on this since we've gone virtual, basically, of like people realizing, oh, people will come to our programs from Europe or you know from New York, uh, and I think we would probably find some of the same same thing with uh, obviously with with Hammer Channel, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm eager to jump in. On on launch day, we we you know call that we kind of sit and look at the analytics and there were people that were not in LA and, and they weren't in Brighton um, so there were people that would that were seeing this content probably for the first time um, and I, I can, there are people in Asia and people in Australia places like that so even if it's just those people I'm sure there'll be more but it was interesting to see the maybe not the scale but the reach that was happening yeah, already. Yeah. Um, so um, the next question from Josh is a uh, one which uh, been on my mind for the entirety of the project. But yeah, this is definitely video is complex and big and can get expensive. So it's definitely something that has to be thought about. Now, in this particular instance, the the dams uh, that Hammer is using actually serves the video files. So that's part of uh, the so that's a proprietary third party provider. So that actually handles it in this instance. But I think if we wanted to provide something which uh, had more variable bitrate technologies, which was able to offer more of uh, that kind of YouTube type delivery, we would have to look at, as you say, something like an external CDN, which specializes in video. But then obviously there are implications there about uh, you know additional uh, places to send video working out has it finished processing there before you can publish it live and that kind of thing. And it's interesting, the point you make about, um, could we just host this on YouTube or Vimeo? And so, yes, I reckon with this platform, one of the ideas is that 
is not locked into user particular dams, there would be a little bit of glue code to rewrite, but you could pull information from the YouTube API, get the playback URLs from YouTube, and then you may have to make a couple of tweaks to the video player. Um, and of course, the one thing with YouTube, and which is one of the reasons why we didn't go with that on this project is the presentation of their video player changes almost daily about whether they're showing things and they're putting up ads and all sorts uh, and that you can't change. But for, for some situations, we definitely recognize that that is perfect. So yeah. we actually did a hack day um, experiment with, uh, with Hammer Channel with the, uh, with the open source code to uh, sort of see, okay, how quickly can we use a different video source here? Um, so that's something which we need, we should actually be pushing up to the to the open source repo coming soon, let's say. <laughs> yeah. So the the decoupled nature of it, the idea is that you know if you were um, if you used a different dams or if you had a CSV file with some information in it, it you know it could be as simple as that. And the, we're trying to get the message out today because you know dams providers might want to write that glue code and submit it, and then their customers could use this. Um, or, you know, you, people with, with their own tech teams could do it, Kovac could do it. It's not, um, it doesn't require, and um, it's not rocket science. Um, and what kind of what we want to want to do today is promote this so that people ask us those types of questions and just to let people know that we're here. And um, the other kind of thing, we've only got a couple of minutes left, but um, there, there are, well, we can put the slides up, the links to the, the repos, the documentation, all of that stuff exists. Um, but kind of if anyone wants to know how to use this and have a sort of one-on-one -on -one conversation with either of us, or any of us, then please just get in touch and then we can set up a call and run you through it and, and let you know how, how you can take advantage of it. And could you stick that slide up there and Phil, just so people can yeah, see I'm, it? Yeah, I'm working out. Somehow I uh, completely zoomed over that one, sorry. Um, we have time to squeeze the, in one more. Um, Danielle's yeah. question, I think, is, is similar in terms of the analytics. We, we haven't looked at the analytics too much, Daniel. Um, but, but what I can okay. say, what I can say, Daniel, for, sorry to interrupt, Daniel, yeah, yeah, because we only have a minute left, um, and I'm going to share this, uh, is uh, like I should probably clarify, we're not, that we're not taking things off of YouTube and Vimeo. Like we're still using, we know that we're not going to replace YouTube with Hammer Channel. We have realistic ideas of, um, we know that YouTube is a huge driver of, uh, of traffic. So it's really more about like, we wanna keep as many doors open, but also um, have Hammer Channel as the place where everything is packaged together in the most you know, ideal and, and self-contained way where you can really, really explore. Um, and in terms of how we, it also helps us, I think, in terms of promoting the videos, because now there's like a shared, a shared design, there's a, there's a location and there's a design to it. So there, uh, basically our website now points in many different places, anywhere that would usually take you to a web page with a video uh, player will now send you to Hammer Channel. And our hope is that once people are in there, one aspect I didn't, uh, I, I, I didn't show in the demo is that there's like related videos and you know it, we want to move people from one thing to the next and hope that they'll stay and have a nice um in-depth experience of the of the site so uh and, and it has I'm helped gonna, us with how we promote i'm going to encourage you all to do that and, and i'm just going to have to say thanks so much for, for coming today check out these slides well i'll probably try and tweet them in a, in a moment but thanks for coming i really appreciate you guys coming yeah. um, thank you everyone yeah. Thanks so much for your questions. They're really helpful. Yeah, thanks for the questions and uh, nice kind comments. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah, thanks everyone. Have a great conference. Bye. Cheers. Bye. -bye.